topic of this video is this idea of flowcharts. And we're going to see, be seeing a lot of flowcharts in this workshop. So in your notes, you've got this figure, and I just want to go over it. So we begin with the data, the data frame. And here we can see it set up in the Excel spreadsheet. We've got only a single variable, single variable Y. And the value of Y is either going to be a 1 or it's going to be a 0. And this is just a study on whether or not people are right or left-handed. So if they're right-handed, they get a 1. If they're left-handed, they get a 0. And it seems in this little study, that we had 9 people that were right-handed and only one individual was left-handed. These flowcharts, and that's what we have here on the right-hand side, these flowcharts are sometimes referred to as directed acyclic graphs. So directed acyclic graphs. Directed means that there's arrows involved. So you might get A, some sort of factor A goes to B. He might also go to C. B can go to C. So directed by virtue of arrows, acyclic implies that there's no circularity involved. There's no internal loops. So this would be a good directed acyclic graph. This would not be. Because here you see you've got this circle, you got a loop, and that's not allowed. So let's look at the little flow chart that we've got here. And Krishki uses these flow charts very effectively, and he recommends that we start at the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to start here at the bottom with yi. So it appears that y is indexed by i. So what does that mean? Well, it means if we come back and look at our data frame, come back and look at our data frame, we've got these values of y. And there is no explicit definition of i. The definition of i is implicit and it's determined by the position, in this case, the row number in the data frame. So intuitively, I could put a little column here in my imagination and say, here's y is equal to 1, y is equal to 2, or i is equal to 3, i is equal to 4, i is equal to 5. And so we could say that, for example, y1 is equal to 1 because the value of y at location 1 is equal to 1. In contrast, y at location 10 is equal to 0. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. y at location 10 is equal to 0. Cool. And now we've got some arrows. So we've got this arrow here. What does that mean? What it means is that the values of y arise from a Bernoulli distribution with some parameter that I'm going to call theta. We've got a tilde here. The tilde indicates we've got a distributional relationship. There is some sort of, of a distribution involved. In most of the flowcharts we're going to see, almost all these arrows will be accompanied by tildes. Occasionally, we'll see them accompanied by, instead of a tilde, we may see an equal sign. The fact that we've got an I here 
again, just reflects the indexing and that there are multiple values of y involved. So let's move up to this arrow. And one of the things that can sometimes be a bit frustrating or a little bit confusing when it comes to flowcharts is that not all these arrows necessarily mean the same thing. And so in terms of interpretation of the arrows, let's go back to Bayes' theorem. That's the way we typically present it. But in a practical sense, what we can do is we can just get rid of this and replace the equal sign with a proportion. And so as long as we can define this thing and this thing, then what we can do is we can go on a random walk, Markov chain Monte Carlo, and we can accomplish our goal. So what we've done here, this part here corresponds to this part here. This is our likelihood function. The data are assumed to have arisen from a Bernoulli distribution with some value theta. And what we've got here in this arrow is a definition of the prior. So the prior for theta is a beta distribution with parameters 14.5 and 5.5. And you notice it's a D beta and a D Bernoulli, and that's because the D is part of the R syntax. And so when we actually write our code, we will be using things like D burn or D beta, because those are the functions that are used to indicate probability density. And so, in summary, this is the first of many flowcharts. They can sometimes be a bit frustrating because the notation is not standardized. It's not terribly precise. But my experience has been that in looking at these flowcharts and using these flowcharts, I've really found it quite helpful and I'm quite optimistic that you will find the same.